Okay, you guys, this is uh, the tutorial on how to use the texture generator.psd file. If you've uploaded the DPR house builder asset package, you're going to get this DPR house builder folder. If you open that, you're going to get uh, your texture generator here is down at the texture generator.psd. I recommend right clicking on this, opening it. Uh, sorry, right click on it, show it in Explorer, and then right clicking on it and copying this and then pasting it into like your My Documents or somewhere safe. You basically, I would recommend just having a backup of this file. Um, in the end, you're gonna be saving out all your textures that get generated as like .pngs, and we're gonna bring them back in here at the end. But uh, your texture will end up creating your material. If you don't know a whole lot about object creation, these materials are drag and drop over top of your objects. And uh, they each get created, so let's just go to one of these suburban all graystone. They get created by this shader, which is uh, comes with leg or comes with Unity. It's a legacy shader. It's bump diffuse. It has a uh, traditional just texture map that creates the sort of albedo channel, and then it's got uh, this normal map um, along with it. And so in the end, um, you don't have to do the normal map if you don't want. You can change your legacy shader to diffuse. That would be less intensive. Um, on the uh, on the program, uh, but uh, the normal map adds a little bit of character to it. Um, and in the end, uh, let's let's just see kind of even what this normal map does. This is orange, white, no shutters on this. And let's just change it. Um, let's zoom in here and then just change it to uh, just the diffuse. So you can see it takes off some of that bumping you know, that we have here on it. And, uh, but I don't know, these may be at such a distance on your course that you don't want to waste extra texturing on it. So um, just a little more to it. So maybe your main clubhouse would have the normal map. I'll show you how to create that normal map as well at the end of this. So let's get to the meat and potatoes of this here and um, show you how to use the texture generator PSD. So open this file, you know, wherever you have saved it. Um, I've been futzing around here, and um, so yours is going to look different when you import it or open it. It won't look exactly like this. Uh, the first step I want to show you is if you click this UV legend, okay? So click your UV legend and open that. I hope you know the eyes mean on or off. And so right now in the UV legend folder, there is nothing here that is on. So there's three things in here, and, it, and they're all off. If I click this text, you will see that this texture map um, these squares, I'm telling you where they're going to be outputted onto those objects. And if you put the numbers on, you will see, you know, something like this number five. So let me zoom in on that. Number five spot is used for the rear door or for like the garage door in most of my objects. And uh, so this will usually be on the back side of some objects. Um, or if something was meant to be a garage space, it, this will show up there. Now, if you come back into Unity, and I'm going to open my meshes and go to my materials. If you go to the UV layout material and drag and drop it over top of um, any of your shapes here, now you're going to see where that number uh, correlates to the texture panel. So number five here, you know, obviously correlates to this. And it's uh, so if you do, you want to put words on something, you know, it's going to show up um, back in here in Unity. Or if you have a problem and something's not showing up like you like, well, Maybe it's it's not mapping exactly how you would like. And uh, so this is just a tool to use uh, to help you uh, know uh, what's going on. I'm going to control Z that now. So anyway, let's go back to the PSD and let's turn that off. So let's turn the numbers off. We don't really need that. And let's minimize that legend. All right, so let's start by um, just creating a, a control minus and control plus to zoom in and out here on Adobe. But uh, let's go into just the roof here. So let's start with the roof panel. And I'm going to show you that within each of these folders, they all sort of follow the same setup. Now, the thatch in yours, um, I messed up the thatch, and I need to improve that. Like I said, this is a beta. But the metal has the gist. Um, so let's turn the metal on. So come to this square. See how these are all have gray, grayed out eyes? It means the top part of the folder has not been turned on. So let's turn the folder on here. And you'll see now it shows a different texture. Now, whatever I is on top, so these folders are all stacked. So right now it wants to show this thatch roof control plus to zoom in here. 
So see how this eye that's on top is showing? If I click on these other eyes, you see nothing happening. Well, that's because the thatch roof is on, and it sits above all these. If you turn the thatch off and put the metal back on, the metal you can't see right now because it's got a bad color, but let's do the shingles. You can see. See, now you see the shingles there. So really, you can just click eyes on and off, and you'll get something different. But what you guys are shooting for is you don't want that blue color. You want something different. So every layer is supposed to have a prime color layer, which let's get rid of these so you can see it, a prime color or texture layer. The next thing up is going to turn it black and white. And I've done that to allow you to then adjust the colors so, so you don't have to think too much. You just have to double click this on and pick your color and boom, you're moving on. Now, uh, you can tweak anything as you like. The layers all have a, uh, a type assigned to them. So if you come up here, see how this says normal? The hue saturation layer, and I've dragged this slider all the way to the left so that it's black and white. We showed you that before. So this is black and white. Um, each of these layers uh, for hue saturation are, are classified as normal. Um, the color layers, you're going to see here, pick the color layer, is overlay or multiply. So sometimes you get different effects, multiply or overlay, however you want to do that. But I've defaulted most of them to what I like. And uh, you can also adjust the opacity on some of these. And now it doesn't matter for this roof because it's sort of monochrome. Um, but for things like stone, uh, these have more impact. So anyway, let's just leave that at that. And then this le levels, the last one, the levels is more like a, a contrast adjustment. So the levels, it's a little hard to see here on my screen, but there are three sliders. This one on the left, this one in the middle, and this one on the far right. If I take the one on the far right and adjust it to the left, it will brighten my image. It, this is highlights. So basically, you're turning up the highlights. This one on the, the far left is shadows. So I'm bringing up the shadows. You know, So you can do this to kind of get more impact on your image. Uh, maybe you want more contrast show. This is a particularly more useful for stone and wood type texture. So you put it somewhere you like, and then the middle one can kind of balance you out uh, depending on how it goes. So anyway, you can fiddle with all of these, and that's sort of the beauty of this. And so let's minimize this metal out. So I'm happy with the metal roof, but I really don't want stucco with a metal roof. I'm going to control minus out so you can see better. Let's come down here at the bottom and go to walls, and let's turn our walls into some wood. So I'm going to turn off stucco. You don't have to turn it off because it's below it. These things don't show. But let's put just some wood there. And now that wood is a little too dark for me. So we're going to go in here, and I'm going to either adjust the color. We could go in here, and we could change the opacity and see what happens. You know, I kind of like that. Or as an alternative, instead, you could have come up here, and we could have adjusted the levels and see what that does for us. But that to me is a little oversaturated, so I don't like that. Control Z that. I'm going to come back and do what I did here and um, and change my the opacity on my color fill. And see, that's more natural for me. I like that. That's kind of grayed out a little bit. And then you can also come in here. Maybe you want it to be have a reddish, more red hue to it, or let's come down here. So, you know, maybe you, you like that better. I don't, I'm not going for that, so I'm going to just undo that. But anyway, you get the idea, okay? In the next tutorial, I'm going to do a quick pattern tutorial and show you how you can even replace this wood with a pattern you find that seamless texture on the internet. You know, that's what's really cool about this. And then the only thing here is we don't want this trim. You know, that's a little too fancy for our wood building. So let's minimize that. If you get lost, you may want to just collapse folders. Sometimes you get all these folders open and you're going to get lost and start panicking. So collapse your folders, come back to home base, and let's get rid of the wall trim. So open the wall trim. This is one where I kind of got gas. The wall trim is not robust. I will improve these as we go. And uh, let's just take off the wall trim altogether. And then let's these windows and the front doors. I don't like those. So we're going to go into the, um, let's go get rid of the shutters. So open the shutters panel. And you can see this one's the only one that's different. The color adjustment for the shutters occurs on top of all the shutter layers. That way, any shutter that you, you have show up, will all have the same effect. I didn't want you to have to adjust these shutters individually by hand. Um, and so in the end, the effect for the shutters layer, the shutters in a new folder inside of a group here. So it's sort of, uh, it's just different. It's impacting this whole folder here. Um, and so in the end, let's just do, let's do shutters on the first floor of the front of the building. That's what we had. Um, you can do shutters first and second floor front of the building. 
and then just shutters all, which would be all the windows. And don't forget the UV legend if you're wondering which windows will end up getting shutters um, in your project. So anyway, let's, I don't want any shutters. And then let's fix this window trim. You'll see here it's got, this is way too fancy. So let's go into our window trim and let's get rid of that. So you've got fancy stone. We don't want that. I messed up this painted one. It looks like I got nothing in there. I'll fix that. Let's just put this stone on just for fun so you can see something different. And I want, um, you can have stone. I just want stone below the window. So I've got above and below. And, um, you know, I'm going to make this more robust as we go as well. So stone below the window. See, I haven't perfectly, I don't have the hue saturation layer. So let's fix that while we're watching just so you can see. If you pick this stone window below layer, and then you click on this yin yang down here at the bottom, you're going to get uh, your layers adjust panel. And what I do is my first thing I throw in is that hue saturation. Now you will see sometimes it will come in and it won't have that down arrow on it. So I don't know if you saw that, but if you right click on this and create a clipping mask, this layer effect is only on this one swatch below it. If I let go of it, it's you're going to see it affecting the whole. It's affecting the whole scene. So in the end, we need to make sure that these clipping masks. So I'm right clicking these back, right click and choosing clipping mask. It's only affecting this layer that I'm working on, which is um, the stone below the window here. And so uh, if you happen to create a layer and it's it, it looks like it affects the entire image, it's because this clipping mask isn't on. So um, but it's easy to fix, so just right-click on it, and you you would enable the clipping mask. If it's released, come back on here and enable it. Um, so anyway, so now I've created the hue saturation level. I'm going to come in and take the saturation off of it, so it takes it to pure black and white. And then this is where I've had the color adjust layer. I'll come back and fix that, but that color adjust is just this solid color layer. Um, I guess I'm just doing it now. So that's just how I, this is how I built the whole project. I know you don't have to understand it really, but um, if you want to get into customizing it, I'm going to get rid of this layer. So anyway, uh, we want this to match our roof, maybe. Let's, we want it to match our roof color. So let's come back up here to the roof and this metal roof, and we can double click on that. And let's just copy the uh, hex code. So down here, Control C, Control C will copy this number. And then I'm going to come back down here, and then I'm going to double click on our stone below, and then come in here and just control V. And now our roof's going to match. You know, it's just an easy way to get things to match. And then, um, you know, we've already kind of messed with the trim around the doors here. I did beforehand, and it looks terrible. Let's, um, let's just go get rid of the door trim. There's a front and a, a rear door. And let's just turn those, let's just turn those off altogether. All right. So now you've got your texture and you're done and you're happy with it. I know this is a horrible looking one, but I'm just trying to show you what you can do. You're going to file save as, and then you're going to save this. I would not save this in my Unity project. I would make a specific folder for my texture. So for me, it's in my course building project. So I course design, Unity storage closet, Blender files, and my home building pack and PSD. So, um, I've got a shit ton of files, but um, anyway, I'm going to save this as this PNG, and we're just going to call this test, and then you're going to choose save, and then you got to just click OK here, okay, so then it's done with that, saving, all right, it's done with it. Now, the first thing I want to do before you go into Unity is open up Google Chrome, and your Google Chrome, you're going to go to Smart Page, so I always have this open, my smartpage.net. And uh, you're going to load that image you just created. So let's find that test that we just made. And that's here. So this horrible looking texture we just made. And we're going to open it. And this is now going to create a normal map for our texture we just made. I have got the bias at 70. You turn this bias up, see how it, it basically gives you more impact for sort of the bumping. And so 70 was sort of a happy spot for me for most of my textures there are other things you can fiddle with but uh, i haven't really adjusted anything else and then just do save and it will open a new uh, panel for you untitled and right click on it okay so then right click on and then save image as and it's going to drop us right into our same folder where we had our other texture so i'm going to pick that and then i'm going to just add the underscore nrm to it 
And so this is my normal map, and we're going to save that. So now we're going to come back into Unity. We're going to go into the Meshes folder, and you're going to open the textures, and you're going to see normal maps here. And so you can open your file folder, or unit, your Explorer, basically, and um, you can find it that way, or you can right-click and import your asset. But this way we'll be able to drag and drop. And so... Um, Let's see what we got here. Let me make it. I don't know why my icons aren't showing up there. Okay, anyway, um, so here's my test. And so then you can just drag your test to your textures folder, and it's going to import it. And then you're going to drag your test norm to your normal maps folder, and it's going to import. And I'm going to close this here. Now go to your normal map you just brought in, that test, and you're going to see it's a texture. So before you get too excited here, go change your texture to a normal map. It's annoying, but it, it always does this. Uncheck the Create from Grayscale and just click Apply. If you don't do that, it will be it'll come in black. We've seen that with the Layers Library stuff. So now let's just go create our material. We're not done yet. We come in here into the Materials folder. And you can right click on any of the, we're going to just, or sorry, you can click on any of these and duplicate it is what I'm going to do. So it doesn't matter which one because they're all created similarly. They're all this bump diffuse shader. So I'm going to just pick this suburban all brick and then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go edit duplicate. So now you'll see now I've got a suburban all brick one. I'm going to click on this once. <laughs> you see that? It's annoying, but. Have it selected and click it once with your left mouse. And now I can rename it. So let's call it test. Now you'll see test is still just a duplicate of all brick. So now you're going to come to your textures and you're going to drag your tests right over top of the top panel. And then you're going to come to your normal map and grab your test norm and drag it over. Okay, so now our test is boom. And now you can just keep dragging it over all the things you want to change. Cool. All right, I expect to see some good things out of you guys. Now that's the only thing. Maybe somebody can teach me that. How can I select and just have them, have them all change quickly? Uh, maybe somebody knows that and can teach me that. But uh, I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. And uh, it's only going to get better as I make it uh, more expansive there. Okay, so enjoy. Um, I'm excited to see what you guys can do.